What is going on, you sexy mofos? Today is a perfect day in LA. I'm Alejandro, this is a McLaren 675LT, and let's talk about cars, yo. Hit it, Pedro! In today's episode of Let's Talk About Cars, yo, I wanna to talk to you guys about the Valkyrie again. Yeah, the Aston Martin Valkyrie, AKA the AMR001, or many, the Nebula, or many other names, however you know it. Today, the Aston Martin Valkyrie made the news because finally Aston revealed the official pictures of the actual car. And they're saying that it's 95% there. Before I jump into anything beyond that, let me just say, for those of you guys who live under a rock and don't know what the Aston Martin Valkyrie is, this is the hypercar of hypercars that was made with the combination of Aston Martin and Red Bull working together to create the craziest, most insane one-to-one -one power to weight ratio car ever made. It's got a Cosworth V12 engine with over 900 horsepower, battery assisted motor by Remac that will take the car about to 1130 horsepower. So that's gonna be mega epic, crazy numbers, insane speeds, and things that we'll never see. I mean, they're saying it's gonna be so bonkers that the car's gonna lap around Silverstone as fast as a Formula One car. Yep, you did not hear that wrong. This is gonna be a street legal car that's gonna lap around a circuit as fast as a Formula One car. How are they gonna do that? Power to weight ratio, 1100 kilos to 1100 horsepower. That's the way where they're gonna do it. And the aero work on the car is insane. So now that we get to see the real car, we get to see more of a, we already saw the video that we had on the channel, but if not, here's a link to it. If you didn't watch that video, or if you watched that video and you saw the pictures, you're probably wondering how the fuck is anyone gonna fit inside of that car? And, and I'm glad that you're asking that question because I have absolutely no idea how Aston Martin's gonna be able to fit the bigger customers in there. Yeah, they're saying that the, the seats are gonna be tailored to uh, whatever size the customer is, but even then, I mean, you're sitting F1 style down in the tub and the seats are attached to the tub of the car. That means there's not gonna be room for up, down, right? So they're gonna make it custom to however tall you are, great. You're not gonna be able to move here, the steering wheel's gonna be removable, but your legs are gonna be higher than your hips in a complete Formula One style drive, which is fucking epic. But what about my bigger dudes? And forget about that, I mean, you see the gold wings, right, on the car, which are awesome. It's an awesome addition in the way they made it that they're short, but they don't open through the whole car. Meaning, they don't open from down here, they start opening from right here. So the, the driver actually has to do like a little maneuvering around to get inside of the car. So a lot of the older customers too are gonna be fucked out of the car. So now with that insane rule that Aston Martin set up, which is if they find out that you're gonna flip your Valkyrie, they'll never sell you another car again. Uh, it's kind of weird because then what's the process for those guys who are gonna get the car? Because I guarantee you there's gonna be a lot of customers that are gonna be getting these cars and saying, I don't fit in my car, what am I supposed to do? Yeah, well, you're gonna have some collectors that are just gonna have the car sitting there and appreciating and that's all they want the car for, which is perfectly fine. Uh, the question is, what about those that actually can't fit in the car? What about those who actually are gonna see the Project One and say, you know what, I fit in that one better? I'm not saying that they will, but what if that's the case? What about those people? Are you gonna ban them forever? Also, just so you guys know, McLaren is taking the same approach as Aston Martin, this is a little extra, with the BP23. While we were in Goodwood, McLaren told us that there's a few customers that uh, were flipping around their orders or shopping around their orders, and McLaren immediately pulled those, said no more questions asked, no other cars for you, sir. So that's an interesting approach, and especially if a brand is trusting you with such a big, like a high demand car, a car that they're only gonna be making 150 examples of, or 125, or 164, whatever the amount is for that car, they're in their whole right to ban you from getting anything else. They're trusting you with the value they're giving you and you're gonna take a shit on that? I get it, I completely understand it. But I feel like Aston Martin's fucking up by not considering the final user in their car. Because I really, even though they're taking like the right steps towards it, reality is gonna settle in and there's those fatter dudes and bigger dudes, and I don't mean this in any disrespectful way, that are just not gonna fit in the car and are not gonna be flexible enough to maneuver themselves into the car. That's gonna be problem number one. And I think problem number two is related to a, a, a problem that they're having already. No one wants to buy the non-street legal version. Everyone wants the street legal version. I think they've only sold less than a handful of not road legal cars. So if they haven't sold that many of those, they were gonna scrap them. But I gotta be honest with you, if you're looking at the interior, at the cabin everywhere, where are they gonna put the airbags? There's no room for anything. I mean, there's no 
you got cameras everywhere so you can see out the mirrors here there's not gonna be a window back here and everything else is so thin how are they gonna fit the airbags and also with the weight standards in the US not the weight standards but the safety standards are gonna make the car heavier and how is that gonna impact the one-to-one -one ratio and are you gonna want to buy a European car or are you gonna want to buy an American spec car because they're gonna be so different if you want the full experience which is the lightweight everything you gotta go euro right instead of american it's kind of gonna i feel like that's gonna be a big problem that no one's talking about i remember when i first saw the bp23 contracts the first one that i saw said that the car was going to be non-road legal uh so i'm not sure how aston martin's going to get through that and i don't know how mclaren did that in their own way but i really don't know how they're going to be able to do that and make it possible for the car to be street legal in the u.s i mean just ask Koenigsegg about all the homologation problems that they're having it's no secret i mean it took forever to get those ca cars legalized just for that hang on a second sorry just for those reasons alone so what are they gonna do in order to get past that those humps so anyways with the cars approaching that level of being so light let me ask you do you think they're going to be really safe? They're going to be really road legal and our owners going to be able to fit in their cars comfortably or what the hell is going to happen? Please let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are. I just want to know what you guys think because this just hit me like a ton of bricks this morning and I, I am curious to see how everything is going to work out or what your best guess is. Anyways, guys, as always, I'm Alejandro and I do not approve this message. Thank you so much for watching. Take it easy, pimps. And just for the record, guys, there's no ads in this video because this video is sponsored by ShopSalamandre.com where you can buy the hat, any of the clothing, any of that. It helps me way more than the ads from YouTube, which is shit. If you feel like checking it out, I would really appreciate it. And if not, there you go. Uh, Shop Salamandre is giving us the full enchilada without commercial. So thank you, Shop Salamandre, and whatever handsome guy is behind that.